a lot of people have said that it is very difficult to bring up um, a child in the diaspora, especially in the UK and in the US. Now, the way we bring up our child back home, if we try to use that pattern here in the UK and other parts of um, the Europe, it is very difficult because the society does not allow, does not permit the kind of upbringing that we are used to or we were used to back home. So we cannot bring up our child in the UK, in the US, in Canada or whatever, the way we were brought up back home in Africa, especially in Nigeria. You don't dare talk back to a Nigerian mom you don't dare challenge a Nigerian mom or a Nigerian dad, but in the UK and in the US, it's a different ball game. So in today's video, I saw a video that has been going viral on the internet for like four days now. And when I watched the video, I felt so bad for the girl and also for the mom because it is a two-way thing. We're not going to take one side and throw the other side away. It involves a child and a mother. And this is supposed to be a family relationship. Mother and daughter relationship is supposed to be like um, a best friend relationship. But these days we see that mothers are falling apart with their daughters. Daughters are falling apart with their mothers, which is very, very sad to me. So a lot of people have blamed this girl for calling the police for a, a mom in the U.S., Mind you, this lady is from Nigerian, Nigeria, and the daughter also is from Nigeria. She was born in Nigeria, but she was taken to the US, I think about two to three years old. So practically, she has lived almost all her life in America. So she's used to the America culture. Anyways, I have the video of this girl today. I'm not going to be playing the video where she called police or where she was dragging with the mom, but rather she has come out to tell us the main reason why that's you know everything that happened happened i'll leave you guys with the video now i'll be watching the video with you let me know what you think because she has come out she said a lot of things in this very video this video is a very very long one i will let us see the video now as we share your thoughts down below on the comment section but before then if you are meeting me for the first time you are highly welcome. My name is Joanne and I'm based there in England. What I do on this channel, I talk about life realities of Nigerians, Africans that live here in the UK and in the diaspora at large. So if you are interested in content like this, before leaving this very video, subscribe to my channel. And for my returning subscribers, you guys are awesome. Thanks for always coming back to watch my videos, to check on my videos. I do not take your support for granted. Sincerely from my heart, I appreciate it. Once again, compliment of the season to every one of you and Merry, Merry Christmas in advance. With that being said, guys, let's go straight into the video. So welcome, Fine. Um, you, you said you were three years old when you got to the, you came to the USA. Yes. So the, you're 25. That means for 22 years, the only life you knew was the american life yes okay now let's talk a little bit about your religious beliefs what are you what's your spirituality because i watched the first video and you were talking about spirituality tell us a little bit about it um okay so i i did grow up in a christian household um but as of three years ago around the like right before i got pregnant with my daughter um I began my spiritual journey. Um, I feel like, to me, spirituality is a journey to self. It's connecting with yourself and trusting that God is always within you. Meaning that, you know, we all have intuition. We all have a little voice in our head that tells us when something is right, when something is wrong. And my belief is that be a good person. You know, my spirituality is focused on being a good person and just knowing that what you put out into the world is going to come back to you and so mm. if you put positivity out it's going to come back if you put negativity out it's going to come back if it doesn't come back today or tomorrow it may come back five years it may not even come back in this lifetime and so that's why i say i'm not religious because i do believe in things that um a lot of people don't believe in as as christians and i say christians because that's the household that i was grown raised in so um 
when I began my spiritual journey, it was a bit hard for me because all my life, you know, I was raised that, you know, Jesus Christ, you know, Jesus is the way, the truth and the light. And then growing up and realizing different things, it's hard to, it's hard to be confident in your beliefs when you know that so many people are not going to understand. And I truly believe that this journey of mine is full of people misunderstanding me, but I've been misunderstood my whole life. And so it doesn't really bother me because I do believe spirituality is being true to yourself. And I believe that sometimes religion gets in the way of that because we fight over religion. And, it's, and I do think it's a di divider. I think it's a divider because there's so many different religions, but if we all listen closely, we're saying a lot of the most similar things. Most of all, like the golden rule, <clears throat> treat people how you want to treat yourself. That's just, if everybody would abide by that, First of all, a lot of things would be different, you know. Mm, mm, mm. Um, I, I, the first time I saw the video, I understood your frustration because I go through that all the time. I'm a Christian, but I don't believe in Jesus, and I'll explain to you why. I don't believe Oyinbo people have somewhere where they want us black people to come and join them inside. I personally don't share that belief. Of course, yes, I believe there was a savior, a Hebrew savior 2,000 years ago, but his name was not Jesus. He wasn't blonde with white, with, with blue eyes, and he didn't lead to all the wars that were fought using his name and the crusades and all that. So, so I understand where you're coming. And the message of Christ was, was not how you're going to get money. or it, it was love your neighbor as yourself, uh, do good, uh, you will be judged according to what you do, not according to what you believe, because uh, there's so many scriptures. Matthew 25, 31 to 41 says, when I come to judge the world, I'll separate the sheep from the goats. And the ones who will inherit eternal life are those who took care of me when I was hungry. Mm -hmm. And, and he, he said, when you took care of the least of my brothers and sisters, you are taking care of me. But you see, the whole Christianity thing is a departure from that. It's how God's going to come solve your problems. Mm -hmm. And I live in a country where everyone's got problems. Doesn't look like nobody's solving no problems. Mm -hmm. uh, and, they, and, and they try to market miracles. They have prayer gatherings every morning. And the real miracles are there undone. Mobad's in the mortuary. Mr. Boo's leg has been uh, amputated. Heal those ones. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, so, so, so when I watched your video... I understood your frustration, and it's the same thing I had to deal with about when I was your age. Uh, and I also had to put my foot down for my parents. Mm -hmm. And so, so I saw a bit of you in me. And, and to be honest, a lot of people thought you were rude. I was a lot harsher when I was your age because I wasn't. I wasn't having it. Mm -hmm. I had knowledge. I had studied, and, and and I knew what they were selling was not marketable. But there was a comment your mom made uh, about. You been doing something occultic. Can you throw some light on that? Um, so she was referring to on my on my window in the room. I had some crystals and I had some incense, incense and some Palo Santo. And you know, Palo Santo is used to cleanse energy and cleanse basically remove bad energy from your space, from yourself even. And there was a candle there too. So I, I do believe that when people lack knowledge of things, sometimes it's scary. I'm sorry, my daughter is playing. Hold on. <laughs> but um, I do believe that because sometimes people don't know things, maybe they get scared of it. So I feel like when I started my spiritual journey, crystals were scary to me until I realized that they're just a tool to use to talk to God, to get closer to your higher self. Crystals come from the earth. They come from the earth, and they're actually referenced in the Bible as well. But because they've been so demonized, people d don't care to learn about them. They don't care to learn about the natural properties of them. And I believe that anything is a tool, it, but, but it's depending on how you use it. There are bad people in this world, yes. There are people who don't have good intentions when they use certain things. But that doesn't mean that the tool itself is demonic you know and and so that's that's something that i believe scared her and honestly me and my mother have had several conversations about my spirituality um, there was actually a time where she would come to me genuinely and want to know certain things 
and I would have that conversation with her. But then I, I like there, we weren't in contact for a couple of months, and um, now that we're in contact, I think things have changed. So it's like now I'm being attacked for my beliefs instead of there just being a mutual understanding, like there what there like there once was, and and so. I don't know. I feel like she just was scared about it. Mm. Uh, um, <clears throat> why were you living with her? Because that came up. A lot of people are like, okay, you're 25, you're old enough. Why are you living with your mom? Um, so I actually only moved back home two months ago in October, October 10th, actually. Um, I was living on my own since I was 18. When I was 18, I went to college. And I graduated with a bachelor's degree in nursing. And after I graduated, um, I kind of got depressed because for a long time I've known that I was a healer. And, you know, I was pushed to go to school and I'm grateful to go to school to, to, have, to have that experience. But now I know that I was never meant to be a registered nurse because I don't resonate with Western medicine. I just don't. And so that was depressing to have gone through five years of school and struggle to not only maintain my scholarship to pay for school, but also I was doing a lot of different jobs. Like I was doing hair, I was doing lashes, I was doing nails, I was selling food. And so five years of that, just to realize that this isn't what you want to do, this isn't your passion, um, it was depressing. So coming out of that depression, I met the father of my child and then we were together for almost three years but the relationship became toxic um i don't really don't really want to go into detail but it, it became toxic and we had a, a big disagreement and i was pushed to have to make a decision of staying in that toxic environment or either being homeless with my daughter or returning to my mother's home where i knew it was going to be toxic as well but instead of being homeless, I decided my daughter didn't deserve that because at the end of the day, I'm a mother first. So if it means that I have to be in an uncomfortable situation so that my daughter can have a roof over her head and be comfortable for in the meantime while I get on, on my feet, then I did that. That's what I did. And I had to go back to my mom's house and um, knowing how I was raised, knowing it kind of felt like I was being brought back to hell, in my opinion. But I was I was I was fine with it. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where everything transpired. All of this just started two months ago. Um, I've only been there for the past two months. Where are you now? Um, I'm safe. Mm -hmm. I'm currently, I have a roommate, um, a high school friend. And so now my, my daughter and I are here. We have our own space, own bathroom, own room. And so we're sharing this apartment. Okay, so um, I, I want to read something to you from the Bible. Exodus 28, verse 12. Mm -hmm. It says, in fact, let me read from verse 9. Take the two onyx stones and engrave on them the names of the tribe of tribes of Israel. Six names will be on each stone, arranged in the order of the birth of the original sons of Israel. Engrave these names on the two stones in the same way a jeweler engraves a seal. Then mount the stones in the setting of the gold filigree. Fasten the two stones on the shoulder uh, pieces of the effort as a reminder that Aaron represents the people of Israel. So Aaron, this is an instruction from God, and the breastplate of what Aaron wore was covered in crystals. You see, my problem with humans is black and white thinking. Mm -hmm. If it's not black, it's white. If it's not good, it's evil. If you don't understand it, it's bad. Here's the Bible talking about crystals that were engraved and that Aaron, who was the chief priest, had to wear. 
Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying I believe in crystals, but I'm open to hearing other people's opinions because personally, I know what we believe to be Christianity today in Nigeria is definitely not working. Mm -hmm. It's not working. Uh, the, the most hypocritical people I've met on earth, the most judgmental people I've met on earth, the least straightforward people I've met on earth are the people who claim this superiority, superiority through religion. Mm -hmm. So, my, when, when, maybe because I'm a bit rebellious, my first thought was like, wow, this girl is going through a lot. Most people are like, yeah, you take your kids abroad, they'll talk to you anyhow. And I'm like, no, if you respect a 25-year-old should be given boundaries, even if they're living in your house you should be able to respect their space and if you're uncomfortable with them living in your house you should tell them to leave mm -hmm. so when i now saw you trying to leave and your mother holding you back then i was now worried again i'm like okay you don't want her to have her own space and she now wants to go and then you don't want her to go again what's going on so yeah. so tell me a little bit about that why didn't your mom want you to leave when you wanted to move out um, I, I believe that it's because she knows that if I left, then I wouldn't want a relationship with her anymore. Because honestly, my mother and I, before this situation, um, we didn't talk for six months and, and it was mostly because of how she treated me while I was pregnant with my daughter. And that tell me about that. How did she treat you when you were pregnant? Um, so when I was eight months pregnant, I was moving into a new apartment with the father of my child. And so during the move, I had a conversation with my sister. Um, I have two younger sisters. So the youngest is 15. And then we have a middle sister that's 23, no, 22, 23. <laughs> and so um, she called me, my middle sister, she called me and she was saying that my mother was yelling at her, doing this and doing this. And she was very, very upset. She was crying. And this particular sister, she doesn't cry easy. So the fact that she was so emotional upset me. So what she was telling me, I called my mom and I basically stood up for my sister. I told my mom that she was wrong in the situation. And my mom, in response, apologized to my sister. And then she now told me that I was disrespectful but, but because of how I spoke to her. And so then we didn't talk for the last two months of my pregnancy. We didn't speak for the last two months of my pregnancy because of that situation. And so um, when I was pregnant, when I did have my daughter, me and my mom weren't in contact. One second. Hey girl, I'm on live, okay? But, sorry, my roommate, she's here. <laughs> but um, so when I, when I did have my daughter, um, my mom, called me that day and she I lived two hours from her so she came to to say to see my daughter mind you we had no conversation prior to this there was no apology there was no reconciliation she just felt that because now my grand granddaughter is here I'm automatically back in your life so I allowed her to come visit that day and you know just the joy of having my daughter she saw me that day she left because it was in the middle of the week and then she came back um because I had a home birth. A lot of people don't know. So I had a home birth. I had my daughter at home. It was an unassisted birth, just me and the father of my child. And I delivered her by myself. And so she was healthy, completely healthy. But me having a nursing background, I knew that a baby is supposed to use, have a bowel movement within 24 to 72 hours. So after that, when I noticed that she didn't have her bowel movement, I decided to take her to the hospital. So we went to the hospital and they decided to admit us to the NICU because she was only three days old. While in the NICU, mind you, I just had a baby. So, you know, I'm still recovering myself. And so while I was in NICU, um, my mother calls me. She's in my apartment and which is fine. I wanted her and my sister to stay in my apartment because they came to see the baby. But my sister gets on the phone with me and she doesn't sound like she's feeling well. So I asked her, I said, I'm like, what's wrong? Like, why are you sounding like this? She said, I don't feel good. I have a sore throat. I have a headache. I said, oh, I said, you guys cannot stay in my apartment when I come back with the baby. 
because I have a newborn and her immune system is two weeks. You can't be around her. You don't feel good. From there, my mother, mind you, I'm in the hospital. I'm on the phone. She starts screaming at me, yelling at me, cursing at me, throwing curses at me. She said, you're kicking me out my home. You're kicking me out my home, your home. I'm telling, I'm trying to explain to her that I, my daughter cannot come back to my apartment if my sister is also there and she doesn't feel well. She wasn't hearing it. She kept just screaming and yelling to the point where she's screaming so loud, the father of my child had to come and take the phone from me because I just, I just had a baby. So she's screaming so loud, he came and took the phone and he stepped out to talk to her. And I don't know what was said, but then when I got the phone back, she was now upset that I let him get the phone to talk to her. Um, so after that situation, me and my mom, we, we were kind of, we, we were kind of back and forth, but it wasn't until March that I truly just, we stopped associating with each other. We just stopped talking to each other. And for six months, we didn't speak. She didn't call. Um, she didn't call me. I didn't call her. And yeah. And so up until what transpired in October. Mm -hmm. Okay, where's your dad? My dad is in Nigeria. I'm not sure if he's, he might be in Asaba. What's your relationship with your dad like? Um, so right now, currently we're on speaking terms. We only just now got back on speaking terms because when I had my daughter, before I had my daughter, I kind of had a lot of animosity towards people who hurt me. So after having her, it kind of made me want to reconcile and give people another chance in my life. My dad was one of them. Growing up, my daddy wasn't there. He wasn't really there much. He would come visit, then he would go back, he'll come visit. And then the visits became less and less and less. And I would always reach out to him, text him, call him, try to have a relationship with him, but it wasn't reciprocated. So when I went off to college, I kind of decided I didn't want to chase after him anymore. I stopped wanting to talk to him. I no longer wanted a relationship with him. And I was, I, I feel like I had a lot of anger towards him. So for years, I didn't talk to my father for years. I didn't talk to him because I, I resented him for not being there. I resented him for, for leaving us because, because he wasn't there. I had to take on a lot of responsibility as a child that I do feel like is overlooked because in our, I, I believe like, especially as a firstborn, we're our mother's helper. And there's nothing wrong with being your mother's helper, but sometimes you have, you, you become your mother's husband in a sense, you know? And I feel like because my dad wasn't there, I had to take on so much. And so I kind of resented him for it. I didn't talk to him for years. When I had my daughter, I just called him. I called him one day after like maybe three or four years of not talking to him. And I told him I wanted to tell him something. I introduced him to my daughter. He cried. He was happy. And we reconciled our relationship. And my, do my dad, the reason I was so hurt is because whenever my dad was around, our relationship, he, he was the one that understood me. He was the one that would talk to me. My dad isn't an angry person. He's very... Do you think the reason why your mom is not with your dad is because of the way your mom is, according to you, toxic? Could that be a factor? I do believe this. Um, growing up, I feel like my mother was able to control the narrative because she was the one there. So as I got older, I began to see things for myself and understand things and talking to my dad and then also hear my mother's side of the story. I can use my own sense to put certain things together. Um, recently, it's like my mom, she's, she's trying to heal, but I feel like she has so much anger towards my dad that she doesn't realize that it's her, you know? Um, one recent example, my dad told me, he texts her, happy Thanksgiving. Simple happy Thanksgiving turned into her insulting him. Oh, you left me with the children or this or that. And that's the relationship they've had for years. And it's and so it, it's been years of me witnessing this, witnessing my dad saying something, trying to have a relationship, but then always being reminded that one second. She's beautiful. Thank you. 
So trying to have a relationship and then always being reminded that, um, you know, he was the parent that wasn't there and not being given the opportunity to, to have a relationship with us now. And, you know, so I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not an evil person. I heard my dad's, my, I hear my dad's story. I hear him out and we're working on building our relationship again because I understand that life happens and he's apologized for not being there when I was younger. He feels bad about it and he's, he's taking accountability and he tries his best to have a relationship with me now. And that's all I ever wanted was a relationship with him. Do you know you're more Christian than your mother? One of the foundation pillars of Christianity is forgiveness. Without forgiveness, you cannot even pray as a Christian. The scriptures are very clear. They say, before you pray, first forgive. Your mother is harboring. Here's my, my view to this. Because I know this is also going to trend and I'm also going to get bashed for it. But I'm all in. Your mother is too busy focusing on the spirituality of Christianity while ignoring the humanity of Christianity. Christianity is more physical than spiritual. People don't get this. It is more physical. It's what you do. It's what you say. Is if you can forgive. Is if you can love. Christ said, 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, those who do not love do not know God. So, if your mom can't forgive your father, why is she forcing you to be a Christian like her? She's not making you a better person. She's trying to make you into her. Which, in my humble opinion, my understanding of this, how old is your mom? Um, she just had a birthday. So, 58 okay okay your mom's older than me your mom's 10 years older than me um i'm 47 I'm gonna be 48 next year so like 11 years so I, I think i'm closer in age to your mom than to you uh, and here's what i see you are somebody looking for love looking for forgiveness looking for healing not spirituality in the christian sense of believing in Jesus is your Lord and Savior, you have to follow Jesus, you have to pray. None of those things are important. You need healing. You need love. You need somebody to be there with you to hear you out. You were traumatized as a child. You went through trauma. Have you ever been de-traumatized? How does one become de-traumatized? De you you actually have to go to therapy for it i haven't been yet then you are also going through what is defined as rts please read about it religious trauma syndrome you went through the trauma of having to take your father's place in the home having to deal with in your own words being your mother's husband uh, having to be a firstborn to stand up for your siblings and now you're going through another type of trauma you're going to go to hell you're not a good person you're a demon you're being occulted that is religious trauma so you need to be de -traum your mom too needs to be de-traumatized de she needs therapy she's nigerian mothers don't get this they're not gonna listen but she needs therapy jesus cannot save her she needs to heal from her hurt. And she needs professional help because you're calling Jesus and you're making the situation seem... You're making the situation seem to us, the outsiders, like you're just trying to make a carbon copy of yourself even though your situation is not right. Uh, I'll tell you a story. I, I remember once growing up, there was this man who was a very poor bus conductor, hustled all his life, lived a very bad life. And then 
his daughter wanted to marry and he told his daughter not to change her name so she bears his name because he had no son and my question is why do you want to keep your name what is it that you want to transfer to your children there's really nothing it's just an ego thing Mm -hmm. you, you, you understand so so i see this a lot in your mom it's it's an ego thing she just she doesn't understand what christianity is she doesn't understand that christ is love yeah christianity is love god and love your neighbor and christianity clearly tells us that you cannot love god that you have not seen when you don't love your neighbor that you have seen mm -hmm. so a lot of people will disagree with us um i might suggest to you to in a polite way talk to your mom because in the nigerian sense children are not encouraged to be disrespectful even though personally i don't see where you are disrespectful but there's there's a consensus a general consensus that you are disrespectful to your mom so you might apologize for that if you feel that that's the way forward but trust me your mom needs therapy not jesus therapy she needs to heal and I'm glad you're working out your relationship with your dad. You need to be with your dad. You need to talk to him. You need to encourage him. If your mom's 58, I'm sure your dad's in his 60s. 70. Your dad's 70. Mm -hmm. You're not going to have him around for much longer. I hope you're aware. Whatever little time you have left, mend your fences. Talk to him explain your spirituality to him daddy this is what i believe yeah we had that. you said something about your dad you said he was the one that used to listen to you tell me a little bit about that um so like my mom she's so she was the one that was there but whenever my dad would come home me and him would have more heartfelt conversations my mom we did we never really had heartfelt conversations it was never really like it just never was a loving you know like how you randomly tell your daughter oh you're i love you you're beautiful you did and they or you just tell me about this tell me about that sometimes like we'll have conversations like that but with my dad it's like he genuinely wanted to know what was happening with me and just the way he expressed his love was different um and i feel i don't know I, sometimes i just feel like my mom because she was living the life of a single mom because she was raising us alone I think maybe she felt like she had to be more tough and couldn't like open up a certain type of way, but she was very like the very quick to punish, not as quick to listen, not as quick to console, not as quick to hear. And so it turned into me not even wanting to have certain conversations, me just rather not approaching her with certain topics. So just not really approachable. But my dad is like, when he came home like we would have conversations about his childhood we would have conversations about things that he's experienced because he's he's a well educated and well tra traveled man he's lived a long life so i feel like he always would talk to me about things like that tell me about certain things with the family and certain traditions or certain experiences and it's like my mom i feel like we've we've learned those things about her through the years of being around but sometimes we we only had a few conversations where we were, you know, like, sit down, let me tell you this. Let me, let's talk about this. It wasn't really like that with her. Mm, 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 mm. Now, when your baby was born and you told your sister to leave, I support you 100%. A lot of people were bashing you in the comment section saying you were rude. No, you were not rude. We cannot continue identifying stupidity and rudeness in the same bracket. I'm half Romanian. My mom is Romanian. If you have a cough, you don't go visiting people. Mm -hmm. They'll walk you out of their house. If you have a cough, why are you in my house? Mm -hmm. You want to give me the cough? Mm -hmm. Because Oimbo people tend to understand what contagion is. They tend to understand communicable diseases. They tend to understand how you could spread a virus or a bacterial infection and they will not take offense mm -hmm. if someone had a fever uh, and they were coughing and they had a sore throat those are signs of a viral infection you might have the immunity to fight it but your baby at two weeks might not share that privilege yeah so you did nothing wrong by telling them to leave your house i would do the same my parents know me <laughs> i would do the same they wouldn't even come 
I went to my sister's house in the UK last time I was in, the, and um, she gave me something and she washed it twice. And I'm like, why are you washing? She says, I don't want your trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you understand so sometimes i feel i'm a little too hard and i try to tone down during covid i went to see my mom i don't hug my mom i say hey, mommy i love you stand there yeah I, I stand here my mom felt very offended but she knew it was me that's how i handle it and to the glory of god i never caught covid and i pray i never catch it mm. throughout when he was speaking i never caught it so i understand what you're trying to ex uh, express but you see nigerians need to start removing sentiment from reality Mm -hmm. You are protecting your baby mm -hmm. who was immunocompromised as a result of her young age. Mm -hmm. It's not a bad thing. Nobody should make you feel bad about it. And I think during therapy, I, I think your mom needs to go to therapy and you need to go to therapy and then you both need to go to joint therapy. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. no. It's, it's really yeah. important. Yeah. Especially your mom. You also need to go through therapy for the time in your life when your dad wasn't there and, 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 and you felt some type of way. You need to unburden mm -hmm. and you need to heal. And one of the reasons why people look around for religions and all these other things is because they're trying to heal themselves. And, uh, and it, it's like you, you have something in your teeth and you don't have a toothpick. You will pick, uh, you will look for anything sharp to try to dislodge it from your teeth because you don't have the right uh, utensil or equipment to remove the piece of meat from your teeth so what you're doing is you're groping around looking for what but what your real problem is you need healing yeah and this new year is your opportunity to gift yourself that gift you've started the healing process by reaching out to your dad mm -hmm. continue that relationship don't break off your relationship with your mom you don't have to be christian you don't need prayers you don't need any jesus you need healing all right my amazing viewers um let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section um this video is very very to me it's kind of controversial because we need to hear from the mother as well as you guys know there's always two sides to a story so it would be nice to also hear from the mom of this girl i'm not I won't go with just what she has said. I would like to hear from the mom if there is um, a possibility for us to hear from the mom. With that being said, guys, I'll see you in my next video. I remain Joanne Ekeke. Please subscribe to my channel. Have a wonderful day. Bye.